Hello. 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 Hello
morning. Please rise and join me in the call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Amen. Please join me, remain standing as we sing Breathe On Me, Breath of God, number 420 in our hymnals. Join me in our opening prayer. God, wind and fire, embolden us this day to receive your power. Help us to proclaim the wondrous things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Give us strength and courage to share the good news of your love and your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Next. There we go. So today we are announcing, I am announcing that we have this container here that is for recycling types of plastic that we are no longer recycling or never did recycle through the township. So I brought some examples. This is the bag that had my bananas in it. And here's some bubble wrap that I got in a package my sister sent me. So there's all sorts of things that you can now recycle in this container. There's this same list that's on, on the front of the box in the back on the table if you'd like to take a list so you can more fully understand and post it on your refrigerator or somewhere. And the plastics that are co collected here through the green team are used to make park benches. You may have seen a um, bench in the Memorial Park. There's also a bench at um, Gaskill Park. So the, when, we, when they get enough plastic, then they send it and they have a bench made. So please help 
Uh, also, notice that it is not for empty Wawa coffee cups or scrunched up napkins or the trays that carry the coffee cup. One more thing concerning the recycle bucket. Uh, Sue Marks from the Presbyterian Church dropped it off, and she will be coming in once a week, I believe, um, to see if it's full and to take it away, and there's new bags in the bottom. She did ask that we pack it down as tight as possible. I don't know why, but that's what we should do. So thank you for people that, uh, to do that. That's great. If it's not the pastor, it's the choir director. <laughs> <laughs> yes, treasurer, too. Treasurer, church yeah. treasurer. Um, I, I know that they can't probably hear me, but um, can you report on the Feed My Sheep and the conference oh, you want to do that? offering that we took, which was awesome? Yes, the Feed My Sheep was very successful. Thank you for coming and eating and and giving a free will offering, we collected $455 to go to the family of the Korean pastor who died. <laughs> and thank you for the monies you gave for the conference's uh, Hurricane Ida relief, and we collected $359, so thank you. This is a church that always steps up when needed. Um, one thing about the Feed My Sheep, though, Kevin now will be taking the next three months off, and he will start again in the fall, so stay tuned. Okay, the usual announcement about the gift cards. I do have them with me. The pantry. I think our basket is blessed. Every week when it's full, or every two weeks, we take it downstairs, bring it back up, and within a couple weeks, it's full again. So thank you so much, because it's a continued blessing for the church and the people that come into to our pantry. And one last thing, I want to welcome Barbara Williams back. He didn't even have a chair for her. She's sitting on the floor. <laughs> but it's good to see you. And now it is time for our offering. Will the ushers please come forward? Do we have ushers? <clears throat> God has graciously poured gifts upon us. God's gifts surround us. Let us give this day to the work of the church so others may come to see God's gifts in the world. Oh, 
please join me in the offering prayer? God of wind and flame, set us on fire this morning as we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into the world on the day of Pentecost. Remind us that the gift you gave that day was the gift of speaking, hearing, and comprehension. May your Holy Spirit keep us attuned to the voices all around us, to those who need us to be bearers of your love and compassion. And may these gifts we give help us through your church meet those needs. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound a crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prosify, and your younger men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We come now to our time of prayer. There are a few that I would like to lift up today. First of all, I welcome those who are watching online. I didn't welcome you in the beginning. I'm sorry, but you're welcome. And if you have red, if you're wearing red, take a picture and text it to me or send it through the website or Facebook. Okay. So today we lift up those who because of tomorrow being Memorial Day, we lift up those who have served 
in any branch of our military and who are no longer on this earth. We give God thanks for their work. And today we pray uh, for Pete Kachanik and Kim and Gordon. Those who need healing, Matt, Barbara Crawford, Kelly Servi, Paul Taylor, and continued prayer for Ed Sheeler. And we pray for Pastor Dave Delaney and his family as his daughter has passed away. And then there is a praise. We've been praying for Marlene, and she did have her bone marrow transplant and is doing very well. She'll have another one, but so far she's uh, receiving that treatment. So please keep her in prayer. And today, we can go to the next slide, AJ. I am introducing for Pentecost um, a type of Korean prayer called Kang Sung Kido. Kang Sung Kido. It's a unique and special prayer style that the Korean church uses often. So as you see, Tung Sung means cry out together loudly. And Kido means pray. So the Tung Sung Kido means praying together out loud. And so today we are going to participate together in this prayer where you pray out loud all the prayers you would like right where you're seated and you can use your outside voice if you'd like and so I invite you to pray and then near the end I will ask us to pray the Lord's Prayer together but if you don't know what to pray pray the Lord's Prayer through that whole time so let us pray to our God me and bless this word that comes to you. I pray for Christa, for her faith journey, and for Josue that he be safe. I pray for John and Allie that they continue to seek out your word. And I pray for Quinn that he be full of joy. I pray for my mom as she um, deals with her long life. And especially for Uncle Nick who will turn 100 tomorrow. I ask that you lift up all the prayers that we have had that I present here. And pray for this church and its ministries. Ooh. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd invite you to stand for our gospel lesson. This morning it comes from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, 
he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, we heard the traditional reading for Pentecost. Other times, we have had different languages spoken at the same time. This time, we did a prayer, uh, the tongue sung kido, to have voices all throughout the room. Next time we do it, use your outside voice. So today, uh, we celebrate the Pentecost in the New Testament lesson of Acts. Breathe on me. That's okay. The sermon title is Breathe on Me in the series called When Cod Came Down Like Fire. Today you heard two, the story of two Pentecosts, two accounts of receiving the Spirit, two sides to our own story, two retellings of our own varied experiences. And today, I suggest we need them both. When the day of Pentecost had come, this is from John, the Gospel of John, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. The disciples were gathered together, just as you are gathered together here or somewhere else. They had just lost their friend, their inspirational leader, they had a taste of life, of living fully, of being alive like they never knew was possible. And now it was gone. Jesus was gone. They were filled with despair and fear. They felt the emptiness that overwhelmed them as they thought about the rest of their lives without his presence among them. But then a sound shook them. It may have sounded like a freight train. Well, if they had a clue back then what a freight train was. But being from the Midwest, I understand that sound. The sound of a freight train means tornado. The Holy Spirit came like a windstorm in the desert. If you've been to the beach enough, you would have experienced the wind blowing the sand across your face and across the, your blanket and sticking to your peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> and yet, this sound, this roar, sounded different somehow. The freight train brought hope. Hope? It blew through their despair, like the wind drying sheets on a clothesline. You know, those freshly washed sheets that flutter in the wind, and a wind that blew across their faces, drying their tears of sadness. It was a wind of joy, like kites flying in the sky at the Wildwood Pike Show. It was like the flags at Wrigley Field when they blow, <coughs> showing that the wind is blowing out. And if you hit the ball high enough, it'll become a home run. Winds of hope. And then there was fire. Luke, who wrote the Book of Acts, writes that it was divided tongues as of fire settling on each one. 
they were all together in one place. Yet, this was an individual experience. They were experiencing it together, but they each spoke in a language of their own. It could have been a language that they didn't even understand, but it just came out of them. It could have been a foreign language. It could have been emojis and um, symbols like today we use in our texting. But this, this was a, an experience for all of them. They did individually speak, but they were all together as one. And this was a fire that unites, a blaze that leapt from one to another, to all. And this was a fire that builds up, not one that destroys. Unless what is destroyed is all that would keep us from finding the joy from the Holy Spirit. And you know, when there's a wildfire, many, many, many acres throughout the last, well, I'll just say five years, have been burned in this country. And after a rain, little green sprouts will come up. New life will begin. And <coughs> these disciples, these people gathered, would begin new life. All of this was glorious and it was unexpected. They found themselves in an encounter with God that blew them away. Get it? Okay. The day of Pentecost came like the sound of a violent wind. It was fire, it was power, it was chaos and noise, but it was also hope. They were filled with the power to be, the power to grow, the power to love as Christ loved. And that's what Pentecost is all about. It's not simply the birthday of the church, although we remember that and that's valid as well, but it's a moment of power, an offering of transformation transformation. Sometimes it's hard to rise to the occasion of this kind of Pentecost that, that Luke described with all this chaos and power and wind and joy. The breath that is given to us through the Holy Spirit doesn't have to be a mighty wind. It could be more like a sigh. A sigh of the relief of pain, not just a gust, but a sigh. Maybe it's more than weariness and exasperation that we feel. Maybe the world is dragging us down more than we can stand, but there is work to be done. Miles to travel, burdens to bear, struggles to conquer, and on and on and on. Life is too hectic, too shallow, too crazy, too empty. Ah, sigh. Let us remember that the Holy Spirit was with all creation from the beginning. In the creation story in Genesis 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being and in Ezekiel chapter 37 it says he said to me mortal can these bones live I answered oh Lord you know and then he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you 
shall live. And then in chapter 14 of the Gospel of John, before we heard what John read today, it says, Jesus answered them, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them, etc., etc. Then he says, I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. <sighs> breath. Unconscious breath. It keeps us physically alive. And as you know, I have asthma. Some of you may have asthma. And I have had some terrible asthma attacks. I call them attacks because it feels like someone or something wants to kill me because I can't breathe. It's a horrible thing to not be able to breathe. Like the powerful winds of a tornado attack. Not being able to breathe, to catch a breath, is the scariest experience. It's terrifying. Breath is unconscious, and at other times, it's knowingly forceful, and perhaps even loud, like blowing up a balloon. Boy, you have to think about that, and you might have to blow pretty hard. Or blowing out the candles on a cake. We realize our breath at that point, but sometimes, I mean, most of the time, we don't even notice it, hopefully. And when a, a campfire is fading, what do you do? Fan the flames or blow on the flames. So our breath, unconscious but also useful, our breath from God, from the Holy Spirit, that gives us life. The Gospel lesson reminds us that there can be a gentler receiving of the Spirit, the Christ who comes and breathes on us in our brokenness still offers grace and peace today. This is a day where we, we remember that spirit, wind, and breath are all part of the same experience. We need the powerful wind of the Holy Spirit, powerful in lifting up, not tearing down. Life itself is a gift from God, and we share in common need to breathe. We are impacted by the winds of the Holy Spirit, the winds of our world, and we share in that same spirit. The Holy Spirit was there from the beginning. The Holy Spirit was throughout the Bible. And the Holy Spirit is here today. We celebrate that on Pentecost. It's not that the Holy Spirit wasn't here, but we lift up that story, that memory, and that feeling of joy and hope from the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I invite you to rise as we join in our closing hymn, Sweet, Sweet Peri Spirit, <laughs> number 334.
place or you go about your day, know that you have been revived by the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place through the worship, through the scripture, through the word, and through the music we have had today. So go in the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you would stick around for a picture. Go ahead. If everyone could...